Houston Real Estate Radio starts right now. We're back at Houston Real Estate Radio. This segment is sponsored by The Perfect Life. We just talked with Jennifer Bertrand from HGTV about this week's uh, upcoming new home and remodeling show at the Reliance Center. Now we're going to shift gears a bit and talk about home ownership. June is National Home Ownership Month. Um, Shannon, when you think of the American dream, I think everybody has the same attitude. What comes to mind? Home ownership in America. Yeah, I mean, it's the two cars in the garage. Mm -hmm. It's picket fence. It's it's the picket fence. It's Mm -hmm. the house, you know, Mm -hmm. to have the garage for the two cars. Mm -hmm. You know, the home ownership part of it is key. That's right. And, you know, lately there's been a lot of rumbling about um, doing things that would degrade the ability of people to, to reach that American dream. Well, we already had this kind of, you know, these last few years of kind of the housing downturn, the, mm-hmm. the, the distressed housing market. And now there are a few other things that are going on that could cause another lag in the housing market. I mean, if they did away with the mortgage interest deduction, uh, we know that's going to be a big issue for homeowners. And then there's also, there are other things that um, that they're talking about doing. If, if, the, if flood insurance prices go up, that's another thing. And, um, you know, already we see in, in <laughs> already we see the um, prices for the home uh, labor going up. Mm-hmm, we see mm-hmm. material costs rising. Mm-hmm. Um, new construction costs are just uh, are going up and up. We've seen appraisal issues. We've had um, lender issues. They've talked about putting having 20% down at least. Uh, some people, right. it would take them 15 years to save up 20% to right. put down on of, a house. Of an average or <clears throat> medium-priced home in, right. this, in this city would take quite a bit of time, you know, yeah. and that's... And, you know, I understand the idea of, of wanting people to have more skin in the game, um, but there's there's other ways you can do that. You know, I mean, the the, the PMI was 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 part of that. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you paid a little bit of extra instead of paying that twenty percent down, you just pay a little bit of extra. You know, in insurance to make sure that you you know fulfilled your obligation, and then at some point that would fall off. Yeah, you know, I think it's good that the that the National Association of Home Builders has um, that they recognize June as National Home Ownership Month because it is it is good to take time out and think about what is affecting home ownership in America. I talk to people all the time who are renting, and you know, when you can pay the amount that you're paying in rent every month, you can pay that as a mortgage payment and be basically banking money on equity Mm -hmm. instead of giving it away to someone else's mortgage it's i mean it's huge it's it's a way to save for your kids college tuition it's a way to save for your retirement it's definitely a way to save for your retirement uh and a lot of people don't realize a lot of renters don't realize you know that in in a lot of cases especially in the houston market you know you're paying more to rent that apartment than you would be paying a mortgage on a similar size house. That's right. A 2012 uh, nationwide poll showed that 96% of homeowners are happy with their decision to own, which is good. You have very, very few people who regret when they purchase. Mm-hmm. 74% said that despite the ups and downs in the housing market, owning a home is the best long-term investment they've made. Mm-hmm. And nearly 7 out of 10 respondents who are not currently homeowners, 68%, said it was the goal. it was a goal of theirs to buy a home and james I, I don't know last time i checked you couldn't borrow money to buy to buy uh stock in the stock market or to buy bonds that's right you can borrow money to buy a house and build equity and that's and that's that's a that's another big point that people don't realize i mean you're using someone else's money using the bank's money to mm-hmm. to, Leverage. to to build equity in your own home and 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 your own and if you think of the home as an investment um, and, and for a lot of seniors, and we've talked about this on other segments, you know, that, that home and that home that they've paid off over 30 years or, or whatever has, has become a big source of their wealth in their, in their retirement years. Right. And whether they use it, you know, stay in the home, you know, and don't have to worry about paying rent anywhere, mm-hmm. which is a great thing, or whether they use that as in a reverse mortgage to, to pull some of that equity out and use that as income to live on in their old age. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got it. And it's, and it's something that was, was, painlessly um, built up over time. Yeah. You know, um, there was a 6% drop in home values 
uh, or well, there have been a, a lot of ups and downs in the home market over the last few years. And recently, we've seen uh, up to 10% in different areas of Houston in home values rising. And we don't want to see that drop again because of things being done through legislation. Right. And the market really, the home ownership market steers such a huge uh, amount of the national economy. Um, a 6% drop in home values would destroy a trillion, $1 trillion in homeowners' wealth. And that's why when you touched on the home mortgage uh, interest deduction, I mean that that's big. And and I know the it only could start another recession. It easily could start another recession. And you know I know that that you know Congress is looking for ways to cut and places to cut. And and you know I I, I get that part, but you know mortgage interest deduction is the only substantial deduction that working class and middle class families have. Um, and that's, you know, when you take that away, you're taking away something that, you know, I think there's other places to cut. I'll say it that way. Yeah. Well, and so many families use home ownership as a stepping stone mm -hmm. in the right direction for getting where they want to be. You know, you normally don't start out buying a $500,000 house, but it, right. when you talk to people who are in very nice homes, very nice communities, they started out purchasing a mm -hmm. $100,000 house, a $150,000 house, and then they trade it up. They use that equity. They put a little money with it. They mm -hmm. trade it up and they continue to do that until they got into the neighborhood they wanted to be in. And there's uh, that's, that's a common story in those, in those upper class neighbor upper um, income neighborhoods mm -hmm. it's definitely a solid stepping stone and whether you're whether you're wanting to get into a higher end neighborhood and continue to move up or downsizing and using that stepping stone into retirement mm -hmm. and when you retire and you downsize and you pull that equity out there's a lot of things you can do with it i mean there's there's people who actually have put it back into real estate in the form of investment properties you mm -hmm. know and and Rental income is the kind of income you can never outlive. You know, it's not like a IRA or a pension or a retirement fund that's, that's eventually going to run out on you. You know, that rental income will come in every day or every month, excuse me, until the day you die. If you live to be 103, you'll be getting that rental income. So it's, it's, it's a good source. Um, that's a good source of income. You know, it really is a great place to put money. I mean, real estate's always mm -hmm. been a great place to put money. And, you know, you get tax benefits as well, mm -hmm. whether you're renting your home out or whether you're living in that home mm -hmm. as your primary residence. You know, housing is so vitally important to the uh, to the economics of our entire nation. And state by state, we see differences in the housing market. But overall, it drives our economy. And it's critical that home homeownership remains attainable and here in our Houston market, it really is attainable. I mean, like I said, you can pay the same amount in rent that you would pay for a mortgage payment. More in some cases. In some cases, yeah. I mean, it really is. Um, it's a goal that can be met by anyone by just doing a few simple things, keeping your credit clean, having a secure income, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your job is, save a down payment. And um, it, it's not a hard thing. It's not complicated. It just takes a few simple steps. And if you've been renting and you really would like to own a home and you're not sure which direction to go in, the best thing, I think the best thing to do is to sit down with a lender and let them look at your credit, let them look at your income, let them see where you are and what you need to do to get to where you want to be so that you can stop renting and, and buy later on. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I always notice about people when they get serious about their finances and financial planning is when they get ready to buy a house, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you can have pretty bad credit and still qualify to get a car loan or, or a loan to to purchase a refrigerator or, or appliances and furniture, that kind of thing. Um, but when you get ready to buy a house, you've got to really get serious and get focused. And that's a good thing. I mean, that creates right. a thrifty, um, a thrifty um, American um, ideal or American ethic. I think that we should all strive for. And, and, and the fact that you have to, 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 to get serious, to get your credit ready to, to buy that house, it, it creates a pattern that continues after long after you've purchased the home. And one of the things that I think is so important for parents to remember is that, you know, you can take out a home equity loan to put your parents through, I mean, to put your children through college mm -hmm. or to uh, or purchase a vehicle or whatever you want to do. But be careful co-signing for your children on things. I see parents who do it all the time. They've co-signed on their child's vehicle. They've co-signed on their child's house. Maybe their child was in trouble with a bankruptcy, a divorce, mm -hmm. lost their job for a 
for a while. Whatever the case may be, be careful because once you start signing, you have great credit and you start signing on all those things to help your child. Mm -hmm. But when you go to uh, move, sometimes you find out you've overextended. And although you know you can afford another house, you can't qualify. You know, I, I think it definitely depends on the kid and the, the way you structure it. I would I would loan and expect to be paid back in some form or fashion, um, you know, a large amount of money. If, you know, I had uh, kids that were just getting married and getting a start or, or whatever. Um, but I don't know that I would give them or co-sign for them without some kind of a way out for, for the parent. Right. You know, at some because point. once you co-sign on a 15-year car note or a, a 15. 15 year would be, I guess, more like a house. Or, but on a five, six year car note, you're stuck until mm-hmm. that car is paid for or sold. And in the case of a mortgage, you may be stuck if it's like a VA loan, you know, and, and they go into default. You're you're stuck until that house, that loan is paid off by whoever may assume it later on. I mm-hmm. mean, um, that it could be it could be long be long after you thought you would be paying on that loan or 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 not paying on it, but but your, your credit being tied to that loan. Right. The National Association of Home Builders website is protecthomeownership.com. They've got a lot of information there about the advantages of the mortgage interest deduction, the threats to home ownership being considered by policymakers, and how consumers can take action to protect this very important aspect of American life. I encourage you to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a website that they've initiated just to really get information out there because June is um, National Homeowner awareness and and they're just trying to put the information out there it's protecthomeownership.com if you are a current renter um, sometimes there are great reasons to rent you know you're only going to be somewhere a year you're trying to figure out where you want to live so you want to rent the first year there are great reasons to rent but if you are a long time a long time renter and you really know it's time to get out there and make a home purchase I encourage you to get with your lender see what it's going to take to do that and start taking those steps in the right direction because home ownership really Uh, has some great advantages to it. I agree. All right, we want to give a special thanks to Jennifer Bertrand of HGTV. Thanks for joining us this week. Some great information. And Rondalyn Riley um, talking about us, uh, to us about some pool safety issues. Make sure as you get the kiddos out there at the pool this summer uh, that it is a safe pool for swimming and that you take those precautions needed um, to make sure that uh, you don't have any swimming accidents this summer. Join us here next week on Houston Real Estate Radio at 1 o'clock. We will be live broadcasting from from the GHBA's new home and remodeling show. And if you have not gotten your free tickets, please call us 281-882-8088. And we can reserve those tickets for you at the Will Call booth. Leave us your name and your email address. And that's how you can retrieve those tickets. It is $9 to get in at the door. But with these free tickets, you can get in either day, Saturday or Sunday for free. That number again, 281-882-8088. See you next week, 1 o'clock, Houston Real Estate Radio.